Very good. I thought it would be good to start out with some, some questions about who you are, who were you as a child, what people influenced you, what brought you to the place you are today as a luminous being sitting before me and before us. I'm a very ancient being. The problem is like this. <laughs> <laughs> and to, what can I tell you about myself? I just don't know what part will interest you. But the uh, only thing I can say that I was born with this understanding and awareness that I have to find out a method by which I could give a mass realization to people. I was a realized soul, of course. I knew all about it from my very child. But the problem, problem was that how to make Many people get it because if one person gets it, <clears throat> or if person one person has it, if one person is an incarnation, people don't understand it. Not only that, but they may even try to destroy such a person. That's what happened to all the saints who came on this earth. Christ was crucified, Muhammad Sahib was given poison because they were ignorant. <clears throat> they did not know what it was, what was he saying. So it was important, first of all, to find out a method how to give them a mass realization. <clears throat> and from that angle, I just thought that this is why I'm on this earth and I have to do this job, for which I wanted to study about human beings. I took my birth in a Christian family and that to a family which was Protestant family, because I felt that Protestants are fanatics, but very sophisticated. <laughs> and they rationalize everything to such an extent that nobody can see beyond it. So I better take my birth in them. And my father and mother had already taken birth, whom I had chosen as my parents. They were great people, realized souls, and especially my father was the person who knew why I was on this earth. Even my mother knew about it. So a special rapport was between them and me, and they could understand why I was busy meditating or finding out about how to give realization to others. Then I would say my father was a very learned man who knew about 14 languages, who translated Quran and Sharif into Hindi, who was a member of the Constituent Assembly. He made our constitution. Also, he was the only Christian to be elected in the, those days. And then my mother was a honors in mathematics, all very well educated and nice people. They dedicated their life to the cause of freedom of India. And I also felt that that was very important because if, if we are not free, we cannot do anything on religious basis. This one thing is to be free from this level. <clears throat> and that's how I also helped them a lot and we, our whole family suffered a lot. And I went through terrible times, terrible times since very young age. I was with Mahatma Gandhi also because he liked me very much as a child, so I stayed on with him. Then I used to come back to study again, go back to him. He used to call me Nepali because my face is a Nepali face. <clears throat> and he used to talk to me as if he's talking to his grandmother sometimes. It was very sweet. And he was a very sweet man, extremely sweet person to children, very strict with himself and strict with others, elderly people. But with children, he was very, very sweet and kind <clears throat> and would try to learn from children a lot of things. It was surprising how he understood that there's a lot of wisdom with the children sometimes than with the older people who are mixed up. <clears throat> now we got our independence and we had a very bad setback 
because of the partition we had in our country. <clears throat> and I was studying in Lahore Medical College there because I wanted to know about medicine, what these people call such and such thing, because I knew all this, but I knew about the body, I knew about everything, in the, what you call the complete nervous system, but I did not know what was the vocabulary attached to it, so I studied there for two years. And after that, this war broke out, so I had to discontinue with my studies, and my parents wanted me to get married, and then I found uh, that my marriage was important. I agreed to marry, and I married this gentleman, Mr. C.P. Srivastava. <clears throat> then, during all that time, my only pastime or the full-time work was to find out about human beings. What's the problem they have? How what they avoid reality? How they shun it? How they run away from it? What are their problems? How are they seeking? What do they have to offer? What will they accept? How to handle them? It was quite an intricate question. Every person provided a new uh, new sample of problems and I had to fight it out in a way that it was a system which I knew how to do it because to enter into somebody subtly to understand the problems of the Kundalini, you can go into the journey and find out about a person. <clears throat> and then I found out the permutations and combinations of their problems. So like it is like you can say that uh, like periodic tables, you have to divide them uh, into three, then into seven, then into their permutations and combinations. So you can imagine three into seven raised to power eternity. <laughs> it was like that. But doesn't matter. It worked out. <clears throat> and in... Uh, the year 1970, on the 5th of May, I was a little bit hesitant at that time. I thought I should wait, but certain circumstances made me to open the last center. <clears throat> and when I opened the last center, we started working with others on our mask.
yaşamak şey. Yaşamak şey. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Hillary. Nice to have you both again on uh, our Zoom session to talk about nice times with you. Nice to be with you too. Thank you. Jim, would you like to uh, share with us this excerpt of Shumatiji that we heard, please? This was uh, 1983 when Sri Mataji gave the opportunity to about six married couples to come from England to North America for quite an extensive tour she did that year. Uh, programs were held in New York, Boston, Houston, San Diego, Los Angeles, Berkeley, mm -hmm. and Vancouver, and Toronto. There may have been others, but I know those for, for sure. And Hillary and I were uh, given the opportunity to help out with the seminar that was planned in Santa Cruz, California, where that excerpt was taken from a, a local uh, radio station called KAZU out of Monterey, California, and the lady Barbara Rose Schuler uh, conducted an interview, which is, of course, much longer than that excerpt. And uh, it's one of a kind, really, and I would really suggest and re and uh, recommend that Saj Yogis watch that uh, interview. Uh, there was a lot more to it. There were four sessions with Sri Mataji of multiple hours, which people asked questions that Saj Yogis would not dare ask. So it gives an insight as to how she handled people in such a loving, delicate way. Uh, but uh, the interview itself was, was quite remarkable. That was 1983 in Santa Cruz, California. Yes, amazing details to know about Mother and look forward to actually watching that whole interview. Thank you for sharing that 1983 Santa Cruz seminar uh, should be on Amrita as well. Um, I'd like to start this with uh, sharing some of your photographs, um, which we couldn't in our previous um, interview because of some technical issues. I think I couldn't get it on my email or something. So I'm going to try and get that first because that's a very lovely photo. I'm just going to put this on for a moment. Um, and and while while I uh, get those photos online, would you, um, Hillary and Jim, talk about how um, the restaurant that uh, you'd mentioned earlier um, actually came about because that was something that that you hadn't done before. What what brought that about, please? The beginning was nineteen eighty one. We had come back. No, yeah, nineteen eighty one. We had come back from the India tour. Uh, without jobs or prospects, and we began working at a whole food store, which was the old style um, collective, if you will, type of hippie whole food store, uh, of which it was 16 members, and the name of the store was Arjuna. And we worked there doing very trivial jobs, but it was just income. I was doing also some construction in the uh, our neighborhood. And uh, the principal in the collective was a fellow named Jolie, who was also my tabla teacher. Uh, 
And he suggested that instead of working at the store, we instead went out to um, a restaurant they had started at the hospital. And it was a joint effort between the Cambridge University medical students and the store, uh, primarily and solely for, at that time, uh, the medical students. And so we said, sure, you know, pay is the same, you know, we'll, we'll do it. We went out, we started working there. And then after a week, he said, do you want to come back and work here on a regular basis? And we said, sure. So that's how it basically started. And then after a very short period of time, Jolie suggested that uh, they weren't interested in carrying on with the restaurant. Would we like to take it over? Now, we had done a program in Cambridge and another program in Norwich. And on the way back from the program in Norwich in 1981, Sri Mataji had said to us as we were driving back, she leaned back from her front seat and looked at me and said, you should have a restaurant. Oh. So ordinarily I would have said, yeah, right. But since she said that, and since we had this restaurant and this fellow had actually offered it to us, uh, we accept it. it. It started out, they gave everything to us, all of the facilities, all of the uh, implements, uh, the refrigerator, the stove, everything they gave to us. And all of the stock, all the rice and oats and beans and everything. Oh. They were that anxious to be shot of it. So we started out and uh, it took us, I think, three or four months before we were confident enough to actually take over. So we worked for them on an hourly basis until the time that we were confident. We printed up some menus and uh, uh, began. So it was basically a luncheonette. We didn't do dinner. We just did lunch, uh, morning coffee, afternoon tea, that sort of thing, scones and so forth. And it was very successful. We, I have a menu here. Yeah, she's got it. Yeah. Oh, you have the menu. I sent it to you. Okay, well, if you open the page of the menu, yes. it says, let me read this. She doesn't have that, Jim, just has that. Oh, yeah, I have the front okay. cover. Okay, you have the picture as well. Uh, on the front page, on the first page, it says, Welcome to Blossom Time Restaurant at Addenbrooke's Hospital, where our first aim is to acquaint staff with the face, at least, of Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi, India's oh. foremost recognized saint. And our second is to create an atmosphere where staff can reflect upon and indeed forget temporarily the problems that we experience across the road. This restaurant was on the grounds of the hospital where the Cambridge University medical students uh, originally established it. I continued by saying the environment has been purposefully created in which food can be enjoyed. House plants dominate the available spaces and Mozart is the music most often heard. The food itself advertises no particular slogan, but whole meal rolls amply filled with chicken, tuna, cheese, cottage cheese, and eggs are a daily favorite, as is our fresh fruit salad and various inventive salads. Mondays and Wednesdays are generally set aside as vegetarian meals, and traditionally prepared Indian food is usually served on Tuesdays. But both vegetarians and non-vegetarians will also always find something to their liking on any day. And it carried on and told a little bit more about Sri Mataji. And that's the, the picture that uh, I took of Sri Mataji in 1980 that I hung on the front there from the very first day. So anyone coming to the restaurant would be acquainted with, as I said, the face, at least, of Sri Mataji. Amazing. So that's, that's Hillary and I, and uh, I think we're just about ready to serve there.
Yes. Uh, talk about godsend. Uh, Shrimatsuji says to you about opening a restaurant and, and there yeah. it's just given everything is, is handed to you on a platter virtually. And it's so nice to see Shrimatsuji's photograph. I'll try to bring up another um, a photo that Hillary has uh, sent her earlier. Um, it's a color photo, so let me just try and get it. As you're doing that, let me just show you. I don't know if you can. Well, yes, we I'll, can see. I'll show you a magazine that the Cambridge University yes. students printed. Yes, uh, please do. And uh, uh, they did an article on us. They yes. wanted they wanted to do an article on us, and I said, "Well, if okay. so, I want to talk about Sri Mataji in the article." And they him and hard and everything, and then. At one point, uh, the fellow came and said, look, we're almost ready to go to deadline and we really don't have time for an article. I said, what about if I write the article, I give a, ah. a pseudonym uh, or, or a, a ghost yes. name as the writer and make it appear as if we were interviewed? And they said, that would be fine. So... So that was the uh, amazing. That was the the article that they did, and I spent quite a long time explaining about Sri Mataji and about Sahaja Yoga, how to get realization, how to meditate, and so forth in the article, which um, not one word was changed. So amazing. Do you have that magazine with you yes. to yes. show us, please? So that's, that's the front cover. Yeah. That's the first page of the article. Oh, that's the photograph that we just had. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. And that's the second page of the article. Amazing. Amazing. So all that subtle knowledge is very clearly explained to all those uh, so-called intellectuals there. That's fantastic. Oh, Here's I'm the kind of photo we were oh, searching okay, for. This is, uh, on the left, is Luis Perez Salas, who worked for us. And uh -huh. then it's Brigitte Sogstad, who also worked for us. And that's She's her. Yeah, amazing. She's from Australia, the uh, sculpture, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, they came to work at Shuby Camps, and so um, some of the time uh, Brigitte came and uh, worked with us. Beautiful. It's just very nice how the, um, the lush climbers are, you know, Surrounding Shrimataji's photograph has beautiful photo of Shrimataji and all of you working as such a nice uh, team and giving vibrations to the Nabis there at a time when it's, you know, pretty testing and challenging for the people there, isn't it? Not mm -hmm. to mention the staff, but also the families and stuff who came to see you. I mean, to have food in your restaurant. Some um, of the... So all the some of the other Saj yogis that worked for us, uh, Valtrad West was one. Yes. Um, Rebecca, uh, Roberto Perez, I mean, um, Rodrigo. Rodrigo, yeah. yes. And Frank Lord also worked for us. We also had non Saj yogis working for us, the best of which was Susan uh -huh. uh, Gregory, who was, I think, may have been born realized. She, she was a joy to have. Yeah. And we also had other workers from Paris, from Italy, from Poland, and so forth. So we ran this restaurant for about eight years. Eight years, amazing, amazing. 
Wow. And so it was after this restaurant that you went to, that Shamataji asked you both to go to America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'd like to just tell you a kind of a, a story actually happened while we were running the restaurant. Um, we didn't own it, so we rented it from this um, student committee. So they really had jurisdiction over it, okay? So one time they wanted to have um, a party and uh, bring people mm -hmm into our part of the restaurant and they said that they might want to serve alcohol so um we said no no um you know as hard yoga and we don't believe in uh, you know drinking but they pretty much insisted okay and so um they had their event and so on and uh, we used to also use the common room next door which was a large room where people could take their trays of food and eat Mm -hmm. And so then we came in to run the restaurant and, pe and uh, people said, um, don't you know about the flooding? And uh, we said, well, no. And uh, we went over to the common room and it was completely under two or three inches of water. And we oh. said, well, our restaurant here where we prepare the food is fine. And they said, well, that's because you're on a higher level. So I always found that very amusing. And it happened actually round about Guru Puja time that this amazing. took place. So um, it was amazing how, although we were forced to do what we didn't want to do, um, the divine worked things out that, you know, um, the water came. Yes, amazing and purified. Yeah, yeah. You're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's also how beautiful um Shrimataji works it out that you the excerpt that that you kindly chose is actually um talking about the opening of Sahasrara and our most realization when we have uh Sahasrara Puja next weekend. It's all these beautiful things that Shrimataji takes care of. We can't even um, imagine. Um, yeah. And she actually did visit there um, once when we had in Cambridge. Um, she did come and we, uh, you know, she spoke there and we served uh, dinner to her. And uh, I remember her coming in and she looked around and she said, oh, it's nicer than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Any, uh, tell us tell us more about it um, well, that's all i remember really that was it you know yeah. okay <laughs> there were a lot of yogis there got cushions and so on everybody was sitting down and uh, oh you know. blast from the past oh yeah okay this lovely is, lovely this to is, see you both where is this then this is our original wedding photograph uh this would have uh -huh. been Six years before self-realization, six years before we met Sri Mataji. Wow. So, uh, this is uh, Lake Tahoe on the border of California, Nevada. And we had just gotten married. Wow. How did you two meet then? Because it's a long trip, isn't it? Your, your, your wedding here and then going seeking to India and then your time in England. Uh, it's it's a very amazing journey. How did it start? Well, um, I was working for the airlines as an airline hostess in those days. And um, I wanted to take a trip up into this, um, into an area um, of California uh, for three days. And um, I had to drive back to San Francisco after these three days of just traveling around and it was very, very hot. And so I felt like I might fall asleep driving back. So let me try and find somewhere I can spend a few hours and then I'll drive back later. So I dropped into this little store and I said, is there anywhere I can go and just rest um, for a few hours um, until I go back to San Francisco? And have a swim. And have a swim. And um they said, yes, um, so, what is it called? Scott's Flat Lake, you could go there. And so um, I got a few snacks and off I drove to Scott's Flat Lake and um, was just sitting there resting um, by the lake when along comes Jim. <laughs> and that's how I met him. 
And then, uh, you know, we struck up a conversation and uh, since, of course, um, ended up with us getting married. <laughs> I was working. Yes, very nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, and the rest is history, as they say. Exactly. <laughs> the <synodity laughs> how she brings you together. You know, you think that you're going yes, on. exactly. Just casually going to this, you know, lake. And, uh, of course, it's all... Yeah. Planned out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds so by the way, doesn't it? Yes. But really, yeah. Yeah. It's life changing. Yeah. Yes. We were married. We were married about two years later. Uh huh. Okay. After Fantastic. The first, after the first, first yes. meeting. And this is our second wedding. This is our Sahaj wedding. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this is at uh, Ganapati Kule. Was it no, or this is Kelsen Road around about the time yeah. of Sri Krishna Puja, and there were 16 yes. couples, and um, Shumatiji uh, officiated for the ceremony. Amazing. And the part that I remember most is that we were going around the fires, right? Going around, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Shumatiji um, was close by, and uh, she tied my sari to Jim's uh, quarter top, and yes. uh, and then she said, "Now it it's done." Like mm -hmm. um, there now it's done. There now it's done. <laughs> In other words. Don't think about ever separating, you know what I yes. mean. Uh, <laughs> and I can honestly say that after getting married in Sahaja Yoga, it just felt totally different. There was no question that we would be together forever. Um, but before, you know, yes. other, we had little quarrels and so on. But after that, things were totally different. <laughs> we had actually said to Sri Mataji, because we were married before self-realization, that if she thought it was best that we separated, or divorced, that we were willing right. to do that. And so that was her answer. Wow. Oh, that, that makes so much there. sense now, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. There, it's done. Amazing. It's a beautiful photograph of both of you. And that's by the River Cam. This this was 1984, mm -hmm. and there is on YouTube a, uh, a video of that and uh, the interview with the BBC. And I, again, recommend uh, people to watch that, because not because of me, but because yeah. of the interviewer and her experience where she actually felt, Sri Mataji gave her realization on the spot and she felt it coming out. And her comment at the end of the interview to the camera, to the audience was, I must admit that the cool I felt coming out of my head was nothing compared to the gale force that was coming out of Sri Mataji's head because she actually asked Sri Mataji to feel the top of her head. And you know, we were aghast and amazed. We'd never do it. We'd yes, never, absolutely. We would never do something. And she, she reminds me, she says, sure, I guess. She says, no. She asked, her, she said, uh, I guess the cool <laughs> breeze is always coming out of your head. And Sri Mataji shyly said, well, I guess. And she said, can I feel it? And Sri Mataji said, well, okay. And she did. And <laughs> she was, Oh, yeah. oh, I do feel. Oh, I do feel it. Yeah, it was quite remarkable. <laughs> that was an amazing interview. Yes, uh, I remember watching it. Uh, that is ever so mm. out of the world in a way. Like we would never think of putting our hands anywhere close to Shumatji <laughs> Sastrara, but she's so bold oh. and she did it, and it was broadcast. Yes, um, on the local BBC local news. So that was that was fantastic um, memory there. I'd like to share some photographs that uh, Jim 
you had sent about 1983 when Shumatji had asked both of you along with the other six other couples to go to uh, United States of America. Yeah, this Would you was like a, to talk us through that, please? This was a puja with Sri Mataji in Dr. Warlicker's home in Cerritos, California. And mm -hmm. that's almost all of the people who were in attendance. It was a very small little family gathering. I believe that's Dave Dunphy. You can barely see his face on the far left. And that's Dr. Yeah, yeah. Walker with his family there. Very nice. And yeah, that's that was you, that's 1983. We were fortunate enough to be there. Yes. Then we went to see Felicity and Richard Payment with their new child, Gautama, in Vancouver. Uh, that was another place where she was going to hold the program. We didn't, we didn't go to the program there, mm -hmm. but we were able to visit. It's lovely photos of those beautiful times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brilliant. And so we have um, talked about the restaurant. We have, um, is there any particular, um, there were two things that you wanted to mention. Uh, particularly Hillary, one was the picnic date, wasn't it? Um, oh. Would you like to please Well, uh, I just mentioned that. afterwards that I think I had got the year wrong um, for the picnic in Paris and the trip there. I think it's 1980, but um, yes, it's not, not, there is the photograph, okay. okay. I think Good. I said 1982 or something, so. Yeah, that's a lovely time. Imagine yes. picnics with Sri Mataji. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Um, did you want to mention why um, Shumataji, you know, brought us to America, the conversation we had about those different places, cities? Um, yeah, yes, could, please. I could talk about it. it yep. Quite amusing. We had been out of America, except for the 1983 trip, uh, which mm -hmm. I think we took about three weeks to we close the restaurant. That was a, another wonderful thing about the restaurant. We went to at least six or seven pujas in Europe. Uh, wow. A couple in Austria, two or three in Switzerland, two in Italy, uh, one in yeah, I guess. And uh, so we would just put a sign on the door. We're closed until such and such a day and take off. So that was nice. Uh, but other than the, the three weeks or so that we came to America in 1983 in a very cosseted uh, atmosphere, we knew nothing about America. We'd been out of the country for 16 years. So one one day on the uh, on the television, there was a news report, and it came out that the headline was Washington D.C. murder capital of America. And I thought, oh wow, you know, okay. So I had that in the back of my mind, and very shortly after that, Sri Mataji came to Shuti camps which is only about 10 miles from Cambridge. So we spent uh, quite a bit of time there. I used to buy things in bulk because I could go to the warehouse and get things wholesale and take to the people at the at shooty camps. 
Uh, and one day, Sri Mataji was visiting, and I had uh, someone said to me, Jim, Sri Mataji wants to see you up in her room. I said, okay, I went up. And she says, uh, the, the only person in the room at that time was Harsh. I can't remember his last name. Um, but he was quite close, as they say, to Sri Mataji in those days. And he was with her, and they were talking about I don't know, all kinds of things. So he was there and Sri Mataji said, oh, Jim, I was thinking it's time for you to go back to America. And I said, yes, Sri Mataji. And I was a, a bit shocked, but you know, I'm American. So that was okay. And she says, so Harsh, what do you think? Where's a good place to send him? What about Washington, DC? And I said, now, not what I'm thinking, but what I said was, yes, Sri Mataji, whatever you say. And then she said, but, well, or what about New York City? And yes, Sri Mataji, whatever you, whatever you suggest. And to me, I mean, I'm a small town boy from California. New York City to me is hell. But yes, Sri Mataji, whatever you say. So then she said, or... I know, what about Miami? And oh my God, I'm thinking, yes, Sri Mataji, whatever you think is best. And she said, oh, well, let's not, let's not make a decision now. She said, I'm going away, I'm going back to America, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about it. And of course, we have a restaurant, we have a house, we have cars, we have you know all the trappings of uh, middle-class, existence yes you have the whole and, life established and, and, uh, and she's saying okay but i i was i was okay with it and we had a wonderful life don't get me wrong the restaurant it was like playing restaurant for eight years it wasn't like work at all we really enjoyed it um so in the meantime she comes for the tour this was 1989 she comes for the tour in america and visits Cincinnati, Ohio. And Bala Kanayasin, who you know, was, was living there because he was working for General Electric Aircraft Engines. And he had arranged a program and Srimachi went to the program and was quite impressed with Cincinnati. So when she came back, I got the call again at Shooty Camp, Srimachi wants to see you and she's, I went up and Sri Mataji, she said, Jim, I have the perfect place for you, Cincinnati, Ohio. He said, Bala's there and he wants to have an ashram and uh, it's going ahead now. And I said, wonderful, Sri Mataji. <laughs> because I knew Cincinnati was a bit smaller, a bit lower key than these other places she had mentioned. So that's how we ended up in Cincinnati. Um, she came back about a week later and we were there at shooting camps and she looked at us and she said, in kind of in shock, Jim and Hillary still here? A week later. So we very quickly wrapped up everything. Uh, and after that, I think we were gone in about one month. And we came back to America. That's how it happened. <laughs> so the time, so the time when Shimadji said uh, yes, you should go to America. To the time when you wrapped up things uh, and your life here in England and moved to Cincinnati. What was the time different? What was the gap? Well, the the first when she first said Cincinnati, uh, when she first said Washington D.C., New York, or Miami. Uh, then she went to America and came back. So we hadn't thought about doing anything at that point. She said, let's not do anything now. Uh, wait till I come back and we'll talk about it. So then when she came back uh, and said Cincinnati, and then it was a week after that that she said, are you still here? Then okay. it was about, uh, three weeks after that that we were in America. We packed it that quick. And how did it, how did it work out? Like, you know, um, 
I think getting things straight from Shrimataji was so much simpler in many ways. You knew, you knew that, you know, everything will fall into place and you just had to do it because Shrimataji just said that, doesn't it? And then that's the, that's the thing to do. Um, yeah. How did you wrap up things so quickly, like on a, on a, on a physical, on a gross level to, to, to pack everything up and move there and then to settle there? What was it like and how did you feel the vibrations and everything um, changed? We sold our partner to Raj and Uma. Not a Raj, Uma, you might know um, Nadia, their daughter. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, a very talented actress. Yes, yes their, their parents. We sold the car we, to them. And... We gave away our washer and dryer to Mark and Shirley Constable. We, uh, all the plant, we had a lot of house plants in the restaurant. Uh, we gave those to Bob, who was working for us at the time, and he knew someone that he could sell them to. Uh -huh. So we got rid of all of those. Then uh, there was also a lady who used to do pastries and bring them to us to sell. Uh -huh. <laughs> we offered her the restaurant. And uh, we gave her everything, the cook stove, the refrigerator, all the pots and pans and all the things that we had, uh, if she mm -hmm. wanted to and was able to take over, mm -hmm. which, which didn't transpire. Um, she tried for a little while, didn't she? And then it just, yeah, yeah, she, it couldn't didn't. Manage, it, yeah. she yeah. couldn't manage. Yeah, could, she couldn't manage. And then we only rented a, rented a house, so. It was a rental and we were on a month to month basis, so that was easy. Yeah. We had uh, Nita French, who was working for us at the time and living with us as well. And uh -huh. she she moved back to Brighton. So, like you say, with Sri Mataji, everything just sort of falls into place. And it was three weeks to the day that we got on a plane and came to America. Amazing. And what, what was it like? I mean, you were going back home to America, Jim, but what was it like, Hillary, for you going from England to um, America vibrationally, spiritually, and was it vastly different? Well, I had lived um, in the Bay Area of San Francisco when I was flying for the airlines for five years. So uh -huh. you know, I, I was already kind of familiar with, with America. And but you had not, lived in Miami as well. And lived in, yeah, that's true. I'd lived in Miami for a while. So, um, I was somewhat familiar with America, but uh, Cincinnati um, was different. It was in the Midwest, I think, a um, little bit more um, low key, you know. Um, and, but what was so wonderful was when we got here, there was a small collective, but they mm -hmm. welcomed us with such open arms and such warmth and love that we, you know, immediately felt at home, I think, yeah. And then uh, we found jobs that was, um, you know, um, again, Sri Mataji's blessing, we ran into somebody in a convenience store that they owned. It was the son. And uh, we were talking about needing to find a job. And he said, well, come down to the main office and um, we'll talk. And then we both got jobs um, with this uh, convenience store uh, chain called United Dairy Farmers, where we became managers. And um, he found two stores that were close by because we only had one car. So we just traveled in the one car and then he dropped one another off and came home and, you know, everything, like you say, flowed due to Mother's Grace. Amazing. Oh, beautiful. And how was it, um, you know, just uh, trying to spread the vibrations and hold public programs and meetings there? What was it like um, compared to England? Uh, well, she might have just yeah, been... Cincinnati in 1989 and, and had a public program so people were holding you know um, programs of course it was a smaller smaller group than than England but uh, everybody was very dedicated and we had regular meetings and people came and some people stuck on some people didn't um, yeah so, and what's the collective like now um, there's about maybe 35 people, something like that, 35 to 40. Mm -hmm. Over the years, we've had a lot of people actually move away to different places. And yeah. uh, 
So, um, but it's, you, you know, it stayed for a number of years now, around about that amount, yeah. Um, we probably have about, um, our collectives make very diverse, really. We probably have about 50% 50 50 from um, India, mm -hmm. and then we have Italians and... Um, mm -hmm. Russian. Russians. And English. English, and then um, we had Swiss at one time. And German, so it, it's you know it's quite diverse, yeah. And what how, did did Shimataji visit frequently when you were there in Cincinnati? Yeah, she did come uh, again in nineteen eighty two. Ninety two. Ninety sorry, ninety two. Sorry, um, she had another program at this beautiful place called Alt Park, um, down in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. It was it's open air, so that was, mm -hmm. it was very beautiful, and the weather held. Um, was was lovely, and so we did have another mother did come while we were there. Yeah, it's the same place that Bala hold uh, held the first program. Mm -hmm. an interesting uh -huh. thing about this uh, pavilion is that on the wall of the stage, there's a quotation from Wordsworth, very famous mm -hmm. quotation, and it says. Uh, this is not verbatim, but enough if our hands have power to reach another hour. Wow. And that's where she wanted she had her program. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing, isn't it? So beautifully prepared ground already and, and uh, it's there is no coincidence, Shamash, she says, and this is this is another example of it, isn't it? What was it like hosting her when Shamashji visited? You mean uh, 59 Certain Street in Cambridge? Or you mean here? Um, in America, because... Oh, okay. Um, or or maybe know. both. Maybe both. I can't state remember state. if we did that in a... In a hotel, didn't she? She did. She when she came, they found um, a hotel for Shumatiji, um, very nice downtown in Cincinnati. At that time, I would say that we we didn't do um, as much as some of the people here because we were working for yeah. this um, convenience store, and the hours yes. were unbelievable. We were doing like sixty to eighty hours a week sometimes. Um, the right. salary, of course, was appealing, but by the time you divided it by the number of hours we worked, uh, yeah. it wasn't yeah. so good. But so it demanded a lot of our time. And so, yes. Yeah. Uh, Shimonaji came to Bala's house. Yes. And uh, gave a talk and met everyone. Mm. At that time, there were, Bala had brought in quite a few Americans, uh, many of whom are still uh, still mm -hmm. Sajutis. So uh, Betty Cooper is one, and uh, Jack Jack Cleet. Yeah, many of the people have been here for um, since we came. I mean, that they, they've been here. So there's a lot of long uh, long standing yogis here. Mm. Fantastic. And and did you did you did you go to Cabela and uh, spend some time with Shamatji J from America? I went to Cabela in only, only one time, and that was in two thousand. Uh, uh -huh. And added incentive, as if you needed one, of course, was that all of the planets were lined up on Sastrara Day that year. So. <laughs> Uh, that's the only time I've been to wow. Cabela. It was wonderful, of course. Can you please elaborate on that one? All the plans were aligned, so that was the only time. <laughs> yeah. Is that an astrological thing? There's not much more I can tell. Um, I met, you know, quite a few that's English fine. people, and that was nice, but... Uh, mm. But we were able to see Shimataji whenever she came to America, you know, and she visited a lot in those in those days, nearly every year. Yes. 
and we were able to go to all those. We used venues. to split it up. I would go to the West Coast and Hillary would go to the East Coast mm -hmm. so that we could keep the restaurant. Uh -huh. <laughs> of course, yes, of course. Um, tell us any any other memories that you'd like to share with uh, us that you have of your times with Shramataji, be it England or America, please. Um, well, do you have the, oh, you're talking about America? Um, Either, both. Hmm. And it'll be, it'll be good. We'd love to know. Nothing in particular, really, that uh, thing. Okay. I mean, when when Shamashi came to America, by then there were many more Sahajyotis, right? And um, we didn't yes. really have that um personal time so much with Shamashi as we had when we were when we were in England. It was more like attending a puja yeah. or attending a public program. Um, yeah. I remember seeing her at the airport uh, when she was in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. but um, there was, um, it was more, um, more at a distance, I could say, yeah, than... Yes, it's a vast country. And this... There was one time in California where I went out and met her at the airport. And we were riding right. on the escalator, and it was just Sri Mataji and myself. And I, mm -hmm. from California, so we've been Cincinnati for quite a number of years. And I said to her, Sri Mataji, Hillary, and I were thinking about moving back to California, mm -hmm. hoping that she would say yes, great idea. Because we always <laughs> wanted to move. To yeah. We always wanted to move back. <laughs> And instead of yeah. yes or no, she just said, well, you know, California's better now. <laughs> but not you should move. <laughs> and so I took that as a hint. Yeah. We're still in Cincinnati. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> what more can be better than Shamata G telling where you should be? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually in a suburb about 20 miles from Cincinnati. And the name of the town is Loveland, L-O-V-E-N-D. Well, that's kind of why we picked it. When we um, <laughs> when we arrived, uh, we um, stayed at Ballas for a little while, and then we thought, well, we need we really do need to get an apartment. And so we looked on the map, and we saw this place called Loveland, and it was near the little Miami River, and we thought, well, let's try that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, there's a place, uh, there's a little lane in Lucknow in uh, the main shopping area, Hazrat Ganj. That's called Love Lane. And then your your name, the Love Lane, reminded me of another place that we used to live in Oxfordshire, and it was Dear Love Close. So wow. it, it's really quite sweet how Shimataji puts puts us there, um, isn't it? It's yeah. so beautiful. We go to Florida um, in the winter, and um, the place we go to is called Trinity. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? And that kind of um, harks to your time in Cambridge, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, As well. And is this, is this Cincinnati here, the photo yeah. that we have on screen? That's just to show you oh, how we look now when we're all dressed up. But actually, it was um, the wedding of one of the original yogis here, Tom Fremont. It was the marriage of his daughter, Sophia, um, uh -huh. in a nice open-air venue here. Oh, beautiful. Fantastic. That's just so lovely to to talk to you about your time with Shramataji, Hillary, and Jim. Um, unless the vibrations running, are just unless we're running out of time. I know you wanted not. to ask us about how we felt about Indian people and what yes. we had learned yes. from India and Indian people and so forth. And 
I can't really come up with anything other than to say they're just nicer people, <laughs> less <laughs> demanding, less aggressive, um, just nicer people. And spirituality, in whatever form it takes for them, is the root of their life, you know. Um, yeah. they, they think to seek, you know, um, the highest is a normal thing for them, whatever path it takes them to, to you know, to try and achieve that, um, which we, we, don't, we don't have here. Um, it's more of organized religion. Um, yeah, I want to talk about here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and their family, the way that they revere, um, the way they treat older people, it is it, it's, it's very nice. You know, they have they they you know they have a respect for them. They have a respect for family members. Um, their children are brought up very well too. You know, the love that I don't know they they um, the way they're able to discipline them and love them and at the same time and they have that extended family that also nurtures all, all yeah. the children yes it, I, want, I was curious to know that because we uh, we were listening to this seminar puja seminar talk of shamataji in bodhi in 1981 where you were present of course and um and shamataji was saying so to to the to the western yogis what what have you learned from the indians what did you like about the indians kind of thing so and and we went to um india a couple of weeks ago um it's amazing as it is but there is this wave of modernity and this influence of trying to be hip and cool <laughs> um, which is yeah. blowing at the moment <laughs> so it's it's nice to know your views on that. Uh, we went on the India tour, and as we said in our last interview, we had been in India for over a year before self-realization. So we were pretty immersed in the culture and so forth. And uh, but when we went on the tour after getting self-realization and came back to England. I noticed that I had not felt guilty about mm. anything being in, in, in India. That sense of guilt, which is so predominant in Western societies because of the atrocities that they brought on the world, to be very frank, uh, there is a lot of guilt. And I think religion also, the Christian religion, kind of um, puts that on people as well. Uh, you're, you're guilty, you're born guilty, your uh, original sin and all that. So that was remarkable that I didn't feel guilty when I was in India and I feel less guilty now because of that. We all make yes, mistakes, because, yes. but we all have a conscience and no matter how sophisticated you are, you can't hide from that conscious, although you may try in the Western yes. society. Yeah, you can try and hide, but not forever, isn't it? And and the best thing with how Shamataji has made it possible for us to to recognize it and to and to clear us of all that as well, ever so quickly, mm. um, just to be at her lotus feet um, in our attention is just is such a big thing. Um, yeah, it's just it just reminds me of um, this this very brief meeting we had. Um, my husband Shankarji and I, when you know, for Indians, it's a very big thing to be in the physical presence of Shamataji, and I, although. We were in Sakar Pujas and all, but to be so close, she named our son and I was really just next to her. It was like I was over mm. the moon is not the expression. And uh, Shrimataji was, we'd, we'd, we had to register the name within certain times. So 
we went with the one of the names, which is a very common name, very holy name. But I thought my husband wanted that name. So I thought, OK, I won't say anything. It's his desire. We registered. And then Shemathji came and we had this opportunity to to see her. And and it was El Ganesh who ushered her us into um, the room because we 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 not you know so bold as to just go and see Shrimatji. So she said, "Have you um, presented the baby to Shrimatji?" So we took um, him there, and uh, Shrimatji was stroking his forehead, and uh, and she said this um, or the name he has now. And it was just so immense, and I was so I was just so excited, like a like a child. I was telling Shimataji, this is my fortieth day, and this is the first time we've come out, and we've come to see you. And Shimataji is like, fortieth day? What fortieth day? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, oh, that was amazing. And then when I was recounting this whole incident to my papa and mummy in Lucknow over the over Skype. And Papa said, um, you know, you have you guys have done such punyas in your previous lifetimes to have that little that time with the Adi Shakti, you know, the all pervading, all permeating power uh of God. And it didn't sink in then, but but now with time, when you think of that, when you sort of tap into that memory it's like immense it's just beyond you can't put a price on joy we were just so fortunate <laughs> that for whatever reason she might have she chose us to spend time with her yes when i meditate absolutely oftentimes absolutely. i will say to myself the quotation that Sri Mataji made in a lecture or perhaps a reference to Sri Krishna, Nirvananda, it is the joy, joy, and nothing else but joy. And by saying that to myself, it works. <laughs> That is it, yeah. And it's so important to remind ourselves of that from time to time because, mm. I mean, in England, uh, it's just so easy to 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 get dampened by the grey and the grim and everything else. <laughs> so it's a mantra. <laughs> you have to come to tomorrow to visit us next winter, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'd love to. <laughs> Yes. Um, yes, Shrimatji willing, it'd be fun, yes. Oh that's 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 so nice. Is there anything, any other uh, you know, um advice or um anecdote that you would like to share? Be the best you you can be. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm the most unoriginal person I know, uh, but I once saw a quotation roughly to uh, the effect that plagiarism is the greatest form of flattery. And mm -hmm. a lot of writers will say that there is nothing original. They may put it in different words in different contexts in a different framework but all the truths are there yeah i didn't know whether you wanted to share those couple of pictures from 59 Sturton street just so or were you able to download them did you get them at all when Sri Maharaji visited I'm going us. to look at it. You have that one because you said you liked Oh, us. yes. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Definitely. Uh, I've been trying to look in my email and I can't. I'm trying to find it. Um, 
haven't Was yet there? managed, but yeah, I did send it. To yeah, it was to the Neiman. Just um for the record of how. So no, it's a beautiful, beautiful photo of um Shimataji and um. Yes, she must, she I'm trying to find it here. Three, three or four times, right? For programs. And then um, she stayed at 59 Sturton Street where we were renting. Um, she stayed overnight at least once and then visited on other times. That is so amazing that I'm not able to locate that photo. That's okay. That is... As we say, that must meant to be. <laughs> uh, um... It's a beautiful photo of Shrimataji um, with her wearing the scarf and mm -hmm. it's, oh, that's so mysterious. So what, what is spiritual essence now compared to your days in Cambridge? What is it like? Can you share with us, please, some of your um, experiences? while I try and look for this photo. I'm sending it to you again, Shushmita. It will be in your, okay. e in your email in just a second. Okay. Yes, I've just got it. Fantastic. I'll share with you now. Thanks for sending it to me. Oh, you're welcome. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was in the front uh, living room of this little tiny house in Cambridge, uh, two up, two down, probably about. 800 square feet, right? Something like that. Mm. The, the size of Beautiful. the house. I would have said 500 oh, square feet. Anyway, it was very small and mm -hmm. the Shimataji um, was such a thrill actually. The first time she was actually supposed to stay um, at another house in um, Water Beach close by to Cambridge and uh, at the very last moment the lady there said uh, for whatever reason I'm not able to um, um, host Shumatiji, would you? It was like two days before she was coming and we said oh my taking a deep breath okay <laughs> <laughs> wow what what an opportunity of a yeah. of lifetimes yeah what did you do to host Shumatiji there then well scurried around trying to clean the place up maybe i think we tried to take some more i think we got uh, some new uh, new carpet at the last minute and um uh, frank lord who was living nearby um i think he bought the mattress and we bought the bed and uh, for shimatiji and then um you know thrilling dashing around getting bedding you know everything that shimatiji could possibly want and um wow so nervous, but at the same time, so caught up in all the uh, energy of uh, preparing. Yes. Yes. And the joy and the radiant yes. smiles of both of you there speaks yeah. for itself. This in, uh, the bedroom that Shimataji was sleeping in, and then she has her coat hung up on the little cupboard mm -hmm. for the clothes. And uh, 
I don't know whether that's a miracle photograph or not with the the, the line yes. going through, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it could well be. Yeah, I don't know. It's just amazing. Yeah. I don't remember who took it. Yeah, those were thrilling, wonderful times. They were indeed. They were indeed. And they still are, although they have become very subtle. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful vibrations. So would you would you please share the prayer that um you mentioned um that Juan Mascaro, the Sanskrit scholar, the realized Sanskrit scholar, said uh, when he saw Shumataji when she visited him, please. Um, shall we say it together to conclude today's session? Thank you so much for such a lovely time. Thank you, Rajmita. Thank you. Thank you. It's all thanks to Shimasji for giving us this beautiful yes. moments and Sahaj family. Thank you so much, Hilary. Thank you very much, Jim. Love from all of us here in England to both of you. Very much love to you and carry on the good work. Yeah, you're the perfect interviewer, really. You have that beautiful <laughs> qualities that make everyone feel so loved, so comfortable. Um, yeah. Most kind of you. I do not deserve you of this, but thank you. I'll stop recording now. Jay Shumatji, thank you. Jay Shumatji.